Hello there you beautiful people and in this lecture I'm very excited to share with you a secret that all top programmers know and it's one that was going to save you countless hours of headache. Now this isn't some super cool new tool or a magic button you press that invents the next Facebook but it's a really practical piece of advice that you can use all the time. So what is this secret? Well one of the best kept secrets is knowing how to ask great questions. Now I know that's really cheesy, but everyone gets questions when programming, no matter how awesome or experienced they are. Asking questions is really just a fact of life for a programmer, and learning how to ask great questions will allow you to fix your problems much faster and save you loads of time and headache in the process. If you put in a little extra energy up front, it will continue to save you time for years and years to come when you get stuck, and you always will. Trust me. A massive benefit you have from signing up to this course is that you're part of a vibrant and collaborative community of students just like you that are facing very similar challenges and very similar successes. So in this community, we're all working together as a team to help each other succeed and have fun learning Python. And I'll be around in the forums and the Q&A sections as much as I possibly can to help out. And you may as well make use of this community in order to create a more fun and fast-paced learning environment for everyone and save yourself time when you get stuck. So in this lecture, we're going to go over the process for asking a great question in the course discussion forums. And by the end of this lecture, you'll have a really rigorous and rich process for asking programming related questions that will serve you excellently in your future as a Python programmer on this course and beyond. I've put a link to a downloadable version of this process in the notes for this lecture. So go ahead and open that and make sure that you have it open as you follow through with this lecture. Also, make sure you use it in the future when you ask a question in this course, because it'll make everything go much more smoothly. Trust me. So how do you ask questions in the forum? Well, if you head on over to the course dashboard, you'll see a toolbar at the top that looks something like this. And in here, you'll see a certain tab that says Q&A, which stands for questions and answers. So click on that and it'll open up the forums. In here, you'll be able to search for people's questions using this text box, but you'll also be able to ask new questions of your own. So let's ask a question by clicking the Ask a New Question button over here in the beautiful green. If you have the checklist downloaded for this lecture from the lecture downloads, which I highly encourage you to do, you'll see that step number one for creating a great question is to have a great question title. For any new question, the first thing you need to add in the question title is the help tag. The help tag looks like this. You open up some square brackets, type in the word help and close those square brackets. What this does is it lets everyone know that the question still hasn't been answered and that you'd still like some help. When your question has been solved, make sure to change the help tag to a solve tag that looks like this. You basically replace the word help with the word solved so that we all know that it's been solved and can look at it if we have a similar problem next time. This will also stop you getting notifications that you don't need anymore. When making your course title, use a clear and descriptive title that makes it very clear what the issue is. The clearer the better. This is the most critical thing, because if it's really easy to see what the problem is, it'll be much faster for people to figure out what's wrong, whether they can help and actually help you solve the problem faster. Let's say our question was that values weren't being printed to the screen when we were running our script. We might type a question that looks something like this. We'd start with our help tag and then type answer not being shown on screen when running Python script. Now down here in this box, we need to add a description for our problem so we can give it a bit more context. You must include these five steps in the description to have an excellent question. The first one is the observed behavior. What did you actually see happen? The second one is the expected behavior. What should have happened and what did you expect? The third one is a link to the code you used, which will be using an external service for this purpose. The fourth one is where you think the problem might be, like you know, what line you think might be broken. And the fifth one is a list of all the things you've tried already. On top of all this, include other relevant information such as errors and warning text, version info, and screenshots where required. So let's go through the process of creating a description by using our checklist. According to our checklist, 
the first thing we need to do is add our observe behavior. So our observe behavior might be something like script runs successfully, but the answer doesn't show up. Okay, cool. The next thing we will need to do is to add our expected behavior, i.e. what we want it to happen. So what we might write would be, I expected the answer to to show up on the screen when I ran the script. Okay, now we need to add a link to our code. For this, we're going to use an external and totally amazing service called Gist. So what we need to do is head over to gist.github.com. I'll put a link that you can click on in, this, in the lecture. Now you don't need an account for this. Let's add a title for our file called problem.py and copy and paste the code into it. We'll notice that Gist does very nice highlighting for us and this depends on the language we use. Python would have different highlighting to Java, for example. Now click create secret Gist. Once you've done that, just copy and paste the link at the top here. This is the link to your Gist. Anyone with that link can see the code and help you out. So we'll copy and paste that into our question. Now we need to say where we think the problem might be. There must be something different between the script and using the shell. It worked in the shell, lines one to two hold the issue I think. Is something missing? That might be something we'd write. Next step is a list of things we've tried already. Well, we didn't try too much. So I've tried running the script with different numbers. It didn't make any difference. Finally, we need to add any extra information that we have. Error messages, well, there's no error message. Version number, Python 3.5.2. Screenshots, not required. Now that we've followed through our checklist, we can post this question with confidence and know that it is an excellently asked question. It's really easy to understand and is therefore going to be solved as quickly as possible. This is well worth the effort, believe me. And as an added benefit, it's very likely that you'll probably have solved the problem whilst asking the question, which saves just everyone loads of time. By the way, if someone does help you out, feel free to keep in touch with them and try to build a friendship to help each other out in the future. That kind of study buddy situation is great for making new friends and it really helps you learn much better when you can share ideas with other people. If you do make friends with someone on the course, could you please send a message to me about it? It would make me really happy to see that. It would really, really make my day. Anyway, let's say I'm browsing the forum and I see your question. I recognise that you need help by seeing the help tag. And like the legend that I am, I come over to help. The question is clear and I immediately understand the problem. I read more and see that you're using a script. I check out the code and then it hits me. <sighs> you forgot to use the print function. I type a message saying, put the additions inside the print function. That should solve your problem. You try it out and indeed it works. You can now mark the question as solved. So that if anyone else has this problem, they can find it and solve it too. Now out of politeness, I send a thank you message to the helper and ask if they want to keep in touch. There we are. That's how to ask and answer questions in this course. There we have it. We have asked a very well thought out question and got an answer to our problem as fast as possible. Plus we maybe even made a new friend, eh? Knowing how to ask great questions is a secret of all top programmers and now you have it too. Now that we've installed Python, been introduced to idle and know how to ask great questions if we get stuck, we're now 100% ready to dive into the world of Python programming. This is where our adventure truly begins. So buckle up and I'll see you in the next video.